Good morning, my people, my people, my people. My name is Chief Strongblood, St. Vincent and the Grenadines' favorite and most hated son, the diaspora machismo. My people, today's lesson is why the so-called Jews inhabits Israel. Why the so-called Jews inhabits Israel, my people. Let us get into this lesson by starting with the scripture reading. <clears throat> I would like for you to turn to Psalms 82, verse 6. That is Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6. It says, I say, I said you are gods. You are the sons of the Most High. O great supreme and of the Most High. Father, today is another beautiful day that you have given us so we can enjoy the splendor, the beauty, and the glory of the love you give to us each day, manifested in the day you present us. Father, I ask that as I'm about to speak to you and to your people about you, Mosai, about your son, Yahusha, uh, from your holy scriptures and from the corrupt Bible, Mosai, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit divinely close to me. Let your Holy Spirit do these things on my behalf. First, let your Holy Spirit put only the things you have placed upon my heart, upon my lips. Second, let your Holy Spirit warn off all who will try to use demonic and other forces to interfere with my mind, to interfere with my memory, to interfere with my thoughts. Third, let your Holy Spirit warn of all who try to use demonic and other forces to put words in my mouth that are not in my vocabulary or who will try to cause me to stumble over words I am familiar with. And the fourth thing I want your Holy Spirit to do for me, Mosai, is to keep my mind clear. Let, it, let your Holy Spirit create a channel from my mind to heaven so you can infuse whatever you think I should say when I speak to your people. Yahweh, send your holy angels to encamp around this very place. So this place can become a heaven, a place of safety where I speak about you and about your words. In Yahweh's name I say, let it be done. My people, the scripture reading says, I say, I said, you are gods. You are the children of the Most High. When Jesus had a confrontation with the members of the temple, when they accused Yahweh, the son of the Most High, of, of, of referring him to himself as a god, he said, but isn't it written? Isn't it written in the, in the prophets, in the scriptures, that you are gods? You see, this the scribe, the Pharisees, especially the Jews, could not comprehend God in the flesh. All day, although they spend their entire life looking forward to the promise of the coming Messiah, they could not see it when it appeared to them in the flesh. When the Most High Son Yahweh appeared to them in the flesh, they could not recognize the God who they were looking forward to. <laughs> My people, the Most High said to the second king of Israel, King David, the man who the Most High declares is a man after his own heart. He said, David, you and your community are gods, you are the sons and the children of the Most High. My people, this is the word of the Most High declaring to us that we are God. But our Godship does not exceed that of the Most High. My people, the Israelites refuse to believe and to acknowledge 
that the Holy Scriptures was written by our forefathers. Most of our people refuse to acknowledge that the Holy Scriptures is writing that was created by our forefathers about our history and it constitutes that which we should live by. You see, we have been oppressed and we have been suppressed and we have been rejected and rejected for so long. We cannot believe the level of importance the Most High, the Creator God, have placed upon us that He makes us God. My people, we are gods that fell from grace. And we fell from grace because instead of acknowledging who the Most High or what the Most High have made us, we want to be ordinary. We want to be simple. We want to be like the other people that inhabited the world. My people, then in come the Caucasians, the Edomites, and they became extremely jealous of the lofty position that we have, and they deceive us into betraying the love and the trust that the Most High God have placed in us. And now we are suffering the cause that is supposed to be inflicted upon them. We are now suffering from that cause. They have now turned around everything. They have took our place and they have given us their place. My people, the question we are here to ask and to answer, why the so-called Jews now inhabit Israel? Let us turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 13, verse 15. Genesis chapter 13, verse 15. All the land you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. This was the Most High speaking to his servant Abraham, his faithful servant Abraham. And see, Abraham, look out there. All of the land that you can see, I am going to give it to you and to your offspring forever. Genesis chapter, 5, chapter 17 verse 8. Genesis chapter 17 verse 8. The whole land of Canaan where you now reside as a foreigner I will give to you and your descendants as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. My people the land where the country of Israel now sit is the land of Canaan, the inheritance of the Israelites. This is the inheritance of the Israelites by virtue to a covenant or a contract, the great creator who created that land, who created this world, who created this earth, made with our father, Abraham. That is our land. That is the land of the Israelites, not the land of the Israeli, the land of the Israelites. The children of the transatlantic slave trade. So the question we must still ask here is why are the so-called Jews now inhabiting habits Israel? My people, when the Caucasians got us to betray our God and to become the enemy of the God who loves us. They switch places with, with us. They take over all of the possession that the Israelites are supposed to have. And they make us slave. They put us in their position. Remember, Deuteronomy chapter 30 says, all of the curses are for your enemies, those people who hate and persecute you. But because you wanted to be like them, because you wanted to be like them, I allow you to switch places with them. 
so you can enjoy what they were supposed to enjoy. So you can undergo what they were supposed to undergo. It is not a nice thing being a slave. My people. When the Roman conquered the world, which include Israel, remember the Romans are the Edomites. They are the Caucasians. They are the Edomites of the Bible. They are the direct nemesis of the Israelites. They hated the Israelites, but they could not take a chance. They have to be careful in the manner in which they treated them. Because the last thing you want to do is to get the God of the Israelites angry with you. So they were very careful. They were very careful in the manner in which they treated us. They had a redeemer. They couldn't have that. They couldn't have a redeemer. It's coming to free the Israelites because anytime the Israelites are free, the Israelites will take up their place on the world scene as world conquerors and world leaders. And the enemies of the Israelites will go into slavery. Obadiah says about the Edomites and Caucasians, as you have done, so it shall be done unto you. My people. So here come Yahweh, the son of the Most High. And the entire nation of Israel thought that Yahweh's main purpose was to bring them redemption from bondage, from physical bondage. It was not Yahweh's responsibility to bring us out of physical bondage. Yahweh did it using the servant Moses out of Egyptian bondage. But now we have to get ourselves out of this bondage because the Most High have already put in us that which is needed for us to free ourselves from the physical bondage. So the Romans decided this Messiah who is going to free our slave and who is going to ensure that we become slave ourselves, we have to get rid of him. They, they did not have the authority to kill him because they cannot kill no Israelites. Unless those Israelites have defiled themselves and have the Holy Spirit of the Most High taken away from them. So what they did, they woke it out. So the Israelites will fight against their own Redeemer and Messiah and cause him to be executed. So they get rid of the Mosai son. But what happened when they get rid of the Mosai son, Yahusha? Three days later, the man came back alive. This was the same man who raised Lazarus from the dead. The same man who called forth the little maiden from her deathbed. And she came back to life. The same man who healed the sick. The same man who, cast, who cleansed the leper. The same man who the demons that the Romans put into the Israelites were able to cast them out. The Romans were of the opinion that if you take away the Israelites from their homeland, then they will not have the type of power that they possess when they are in Israel. They study the scriptures. So what they do? They enslave all of the Israelites. They take them back to Rome. They take all of the ornaments in the temple to Rome. They take all of the scriptures back to Rome. Take them away from this place because when they are in this place, it seems like they has exceptional powers, powers that we don't understand, powers we cannot contend with. But that is not why. That is not why. That is not why the Roman, the, 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 the Jews, the so-called Jews, now inhabits Israel. My people, the nation of Israel as we know today was established in 19... 48 or thereabout. I always heard my father speaking about this. 
And he always said that these people have no right to be there. I didn't know what my father knew. I didn't know what my father understood, but, but my father understood a great deal of things that I am now learning about. Let me tell you why. The so-called Jews now inhabit Israel. Let us turn our Bible to Jeremiah chapter 32, and we are going to read from 37, go down to 40. And this is why the so-called Jews now inhabits Israel. It says, Behold, I will gather them out of all the country. I have driven them in my anger, in my fury, and in my great wrath. And I will bring them again to this place. And I will cause them to dwell in safety. And they shall be my people, and I will be their gods. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever. For the God of for the good of them and for their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do good to them. But I will put a fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. My people, the Caucasians don't want the prophecy of Jeremiah chapter 30 to verse 37 to 40 come to pass. They don't want it to come to pass because the most I have declared that he is going to gather all of his people from where he has scattered them in his great anger and his great wrath. And he's going to bring them back to the place where he promised his servant Abraham that he will give them for an inheritance forever. And I will bring them back again to this place and I will cause them to dwell in safety, my people. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever. For the good of them and for their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That I will not turn away from them and to do good to them. But I will put in the fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me, my people. This is the promise of the Most High. They don't want this promise to come to pass. So they think if they go and inhabit Israel, when the Most High start bringing us back to that place where he promised in Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27, 37 to 40, they will be a hindrance to us. My people, they are Israelites. They are Israelites. In Israel right now and they are the Israelis the so-called Jews who now occupy Israel are trying to evict them they are causing them trouble they were going to deport a few hundred of them last year my people all of these Israelites follow the procedure which the United Nation or the League of Nations set up for those people who are returning to Israel. But yet, they are not giving them citizenship. They are not giving them citizenship. And they are threatening to deport them. My people, my people, this is why the, 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 the so-called Jews now inhabit Israel. Because they don't want the prophecy as outlined in, Je in Jeremiah chapter 32 to come to pass. But they can't stop it. Let me tell you why they can't stop it. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, a story is told here. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, chapter 3 I think, 
the most high give the boy the young boy who was working in the temple samuel a vision he spoke to him he said samuel i'm going to destroy eli and i'm going to destroy eli's son in order for the most high to destroy eli and eli's sons in great fashion he caused the philistine to come up to war against the israelites a long story short the israelites went into battle and they took the ark of the covenant into battle with them because they think the ark of the covenant would have helped them win the war over the philistine hophni and phineas the son of eli were the men who were authorized to carry and to deal with the Ark of the Covenant. They took the Ark of the Covenant into war. Hophni and Phineas were killed as the Most High declared to Samuel. The Ark of the Covenant was taken up, captured. The Philistine took the Ark of the Covenant from Ebenezer to Ashdod and they put it in the house of Dagon, their God. My people, the first night, when the, when, the, when the Philistine opened the house of Dagon, Dagon, their God, Dagon was bending over on his face to the Ark of the Covenant of the Mosai. They take up Dagon again and put him in his place. The next day, Dagon was not only bending over, worshiping the most high ark of the covenant but his head and his two hands were missing my people not only that the philistine men start dying they start getting boils and they start suffering from erectile dysfunction they became concerned they knew immediately what was the cause of their problem? The Ark of the Lord is in a place where it shouldn't be. The Ark of the Lord should be with the children of the Most High. Not because the Most High gave you the victory over his people, gave you the authority to touch and to take and to handle and to conceal the Ark of his covenant for yourself. No, my people, the Philistine put the Ark of the Covenant on a wagon with gifts and a, and, and, and a mule or something like that and that mule not a mule the oxen that oxen walk right in to the land of Israel where the Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be let me tell you something more my people when it is time for us to go back to Israel, to go back to Canaan, to go back to the land of milk and honey, you see how it is a desert now? It will bloom with beautiful foliage, with food that could feed the entire population. And my people, in the same way, the most high, allow the power in the Ark of the Covenant to slay the Philistines and to give them illnesses that they wanted to get rid of it is the same way the Most High is going to use his mighty power and the Jews the so-called Israeli the so-called Jews that now inhabits Israel with run out of that place they will run for their lives because no matter how much they love the power, no matter how much they, love, they love the prestige of being called Jews and inhabiting a nation for themselves, they treasure their life more than anything else. My people in 2 Kings, in 2 Kings chapter 20, chapter 27, I think, in 2 Kings chapter 27, verse 25. What happened? Israel backslid so bad that the Mosai used the Assyrian king, Shalamanza, to take Israel captive and to take them away from Samaria. 
into captivity back in to Assyria. And he sent people from different counties of Assyria and from Babylon to live in Samaria. Mosai didn't, didn't please with their behavior. They had no respect for the Mosai God. And the Mosai sent lands among them and the lands start killing them. They run back to the king of Assyria and say, man, listen to me. This place is not a safe place for us to be. The lions are coming and killing us. And then they discover that they were dis disrespecting the Most High God. So they taught them how to honor, how to respect, and how to show homage to the Most High God. And then the Most High God take away the lions. My people, the only reason why the Israelis are allowed to stay in that part of the world is because they are showing homage to the Most High God. He is not their God, but they are showing homage to Him. They are appeasing the Most High God. But one day, when the Most High God is ready to call Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 37 to 40 into reality, the Israelites will not be sharing Israel, will not be sharing Canaan with the Israeli or with the so-called Jews. They will be cast out. They will run from that place for their lives. And they will not even look back because they will be too afraid to look back. For a fear, if they look back, whatever they are running from, will catch up on them. My people, it is the plan of the Caucasians to keep the gods below their status, to make us devils, so we would not be able to inherit the land that the Mosai have promised in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 37 to 40. That is why they are filtering drugs in our community because they want to keep us to occupy. That is why they have social media and sports and entertainment because they want to keep us occupied. That is why they have legalized drug marijuana because they want to keep us occupied with the useless things so that the gods of the Most High will not ever attain their godly status and therefore are able to go and help to inhabit the land of Canaan, the land that the Most High have made a covenant with our Father. That is why they are inducing our men into homosexuality and our women into abortion and bestiality and all of these things because they don't want the gods to attain their true godly characteristics and therefore cause the Most High to put into effect Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 37. That is why they want to keep us afraid. So when we are afraid of them, we show no confidence in the Most High ability to protect and to care for us and therefore mistreat them like gods that they are not. They are devils and they must always be treated like devils. My people, everything that is happening to us that is why they changed the, they altered the Holy Scriptures and created the Bible. Because they want the Most High children to be in ignorance. That is why they create and monopolize the teaching of the Bible and religion. Because this religion only teach you how to disobey the Most High and never to be in obedience to the Most High. Where you can receive the blessing of the Most High and not the cross. My people my people this is serious serious business you don't believe you are the Israelites of the Bible well you're not believing who you are does not change the fact you not believe that you are gods as the most I said you not believing who you are does not change the fact that you are gods that you are the chosen of the Most High. 
that the Israelites of the Bible are your four parents that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the lineage from which you came, that Yahushua, the Son of God, came from the bowels of your ancestors, that he came to you. That is why he says, Go not to the Gentiles, not to the Samaritans, but go now to my children, to my brothers and my sisters who are lost. Let them know that their big brother have come and he brought redemption for them. Let them know that their big brother, Yahweh, have come and he is come so that we can be a part of Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 37 to 40. Let them know that they were lost, but they are now found. Let them know that they are gods. They believe they are devils. They believe they are ordinary. They want to be ordinary. Let them know that they are not ugly ducklings, but they are swans that are beautiful and have the uh, grace and the ability to fly. And when they sit on the lake, everyone's eyes are fixed on them. Let them know that they are not who they were told they are. Let them know that they are the children of the living God. My people. My people. They don't want you to know. They want you to exist in ignorance. Because when you exist in ignorance, and those who are not ignorant, when you exist in disobedience, Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 37 to 40, will never come to pass. The book of Obadiah will remain a book that we will read forever. And the outcome of Ibidah will never come to pass. My people, turn from your wicked ways. Start studying the Holy Scriptures. If the Bible is all that you have studied the Bible, the Most High have promised that He has sent the Spirit of Truth who will bring you into all truth. He will show you things that are to come. And you will not speak of yourself, but you will speak of him who sent you the spirit of truth. My people, why guess? Why guess about things? Why guess about things you don't understand? Why guess about things that the Caucasians have taken out of the Bible when the most I have sent the spirit of truth who is right here, who is right sitting with me here, showing me the truth, who is right where you are and is ready and willing to show you the truth. Because the spirit of truth is everywhere. He is like the Father. He's not confined to a particular place. He's everywhere. All you have to do is submit yourself and honor the most high. And the spirit of truth will dispel all of the lies that you were told. A lot of you will be leaving. A lot of you behaving as if the Bible is a pure book. You know, they have been teaching you, especially those seven Adventists. They have been teaching you biblical history in the churches. They tell you that Constantine issued the edict of Laodicea, where he called the pagan bishop together to canonize the Bible. But they make it seem like the canonization of the Bible was something positive and beneficial to you. It was not. It was destructive for you. It was meant to ensure that you, the children of the Mosai, the Israelites, remain slaves and remain slaves forever. But you ignore the spirit of truth when you tell you these things and you ignore those people who are endowed with the spirit of truth because you prefer to believe the white lie that will kick you into hell and you will burn with the devil, his angels and the Caucasians. You will miss out on that thing which was ordained from the foundation of the world for you to inherit the kingdom of the Most High and the Eor Numidu. Oh, great supremacy of the Most High. It's a wonderful thing to call upon your word, Most High. And then I speak your name, I get happy, I get all excited and elated. Father, you are an awesome God. I thank you for using me, Most High. I won't have it any other way. You are God. Let your Holy Spirit go with my words. That you will spirit lend clarity where I would have learned from the future. More side. Let the spirit of truth continue to reign with me. And show me these things so I can speak to your people, my father. In my people. My name is Chief Strongblood. 
St. Vincent and the Grenadines favorite and most hated song. Letting me know, it's a beautiful day. Go outside, smell the roses, enjoy the beauty of the day that the most I have prepared just for you. And if you are unable to enjoy the beauty of this day because you are ill, remember the most I has the authority to heal all illness, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, no matter what it is. He has the power to heal all things, most high. Bless those people who are ill. Give them the ability to enjoy your day. Chief Strongblood will talk to you tomorrow. I'm gone.